Hello everybody and welcome back to another episode of Iron Man Skyrim. In case you forgot where we left off, I just killed Patema. She was one of the toughest battles I've had in the game, but luckily I got through it okay. So I'm just turning in the quest now in solitude and goodness my frame rate dropped. I completely forgot about how bad that was. Hey, screw you. I did fine with Olaf's verse, you dunce. And now we're having a poetry slam at 7 frames per second. Or maybe it's 2 frames per second. Man, this is taking a long time. Anyway, so Viormo drops the poetry like it's hot, and I talk to Falk Firebeard, and I tell him that I've taken care of Patema. So now I am one step closer to finally having that house in solitude. Yay! Okay, so after that I go to the burning of King Olaf, which is just another quest, you know. Like I said, another step to getting into solitude. And now I'm going to head on down to its Broken Fang Cave, I think, yep. And I'm going to complete the mission for the oh, right. companions. Along the way, a couple of things happen. I get persuaded, I get persuaded, I uh, robbed by this thief and I just talk my way out of it. I get this sweet headshot on a crab. Aw, oh, yeah. And really, it's just kind of a dangerous trip all the way around. I do get through it without too much issue, though. Because luckily, I'm actually getting to the point in the game where I'm starting to kick some serious ass. It's pretty, pretty sweet. Aha! Suck on that, bandit outlaw. Um, along the way, I take care of some little quests, you know. And this is this is the thing that I always walk on the roads for, really. These revelers are the reason I carry around the hunting brew mead at all time. Times, rather. If you talk to them and you tell them that you have a bottle and you give it to them, they give you the most disproportionate reward in the entire game. They give you, I think it's called the Charmed Necklace, and it has a carrying capacity bonus of 25 points. It's just nuts. It's, it's the best item in the game as far as I'm concerned. So I finally got that after, you know, 12 hours of play or something. And three playthroughs. That's actually the first time I've seen it in an Iron Man Skyrim. And yeah, that was Broken Fan Cave right there. I just talked over it. That was nice. Yoink. Okay, so back here in Whiterun, all I'm doing is I'm turning in the mission with the companions. Uh, focus, you know, I let him know I took care of the vampires. And he sends me down here to Skior. And he's giving me my first real mission of the companions. This is the sort of hazing ritual. I'm going to find a fragment of Wuthrad or whatever. And yeah, it's kind of an awkward conversation. I woke him up from bed and he's just totally chill. So I head back to Focus and he tells me to meet him at Dustman's Cairn right away, but I have some stuff to take care of. I brew up some beer, I participate in the most metal petting zoo of all time. Eat it, Bambi. Yum. And then I'm heading back to, I forget what this town is called, the very first one you go into, just to start uh, clearing off the story missions as well. Delphine, who is arguably my least favorite character in the game, is the leader of the Blades, so the and she's all like, yeah, here, I stole I this from the, the stole this from the place you were at. And I take it, even though I'm a good seven feet away from her, that's nice. So she tells me that dragons are coming back to life, and she wants to see me kill one, so whatever, whatever floats her boat, you weirdo. So after that, I head up north a little ways, and I drop off uh, Torig's horn, he's the former uh, High King of Skyrim and solitude and I'm just doing that and that should be the last quest I have to do to get into solitude. So now here at Dustman's Cairn I'm going through with Farkas or whatever and this dungeon is a super standard crawl up until about like I don't know. It's actually really early in the dungeon thinking on it. So yeah I, I just I'm fighting some Draugr and then before too long I think it's really after this first chamber you'll make it to a rather large room. There's some stuff on the ground, but really all you do in here is you pull the plot lever and the door closes. That's nice. So now I'm stuck here waiting like a doofus, and Focus comes over and he's all like, oh, I'll get you out of here. And boom, they're werewolves. Well, that was nice. I love that they trust you with this secret with, like, no experience. I just walked up the hill and grabbed their sword, and they're like, you're, you're good. We trust you. I'm pretty sure I saw him swing his fist like twice and five of those people died just on their own blades. So yeah, so from here on out the only thing that's changed really is you're fighting Silver Hand now as well. I really do prefer Draugr, they are much easier to kill and it's kind of satisfying to pop them off when they're just sitting there laying down. Like they're going to surprise me, please. Oh my god, you have got to be kidding me! This is why I hate being part of a team really, it's just... Uh, it's just no good, Focus. You are no good. 
So yeah, the Silver Hands are kind of challenging human opponents, and to be completely honest, I'm getting just way too complacent in this game. I've gotten it into my head that I'm invincible, and this does not help my opinion of myself, because that was pretty badass. So finally, I get up here to uh, this big antechamber, and my strategy in this game so far has been sneaking around and beating the crap out of people when they don't see me. Unfortunately, focus is about as subtle as a hippo giving a strip tease, so that goes completely to hell as soon as, really as he walks in. So I'm stuck here fighting three people, and focus falls to the ground like five seconds into this fight. Thanks for nothing, focus. But luckily he did take down some hits on these guys. Now, this is one of the toughest fights I've ever been in, and I make a lot of mistakes here that I'd like to point out to you. Um, the first is, you notice all these health potions I have? I have become way too stingy with them. I really need to drink these health potions more often, along with those stamina potions, just because, like I said, both of those do affect how much damage I do. So, yeah. And, of course, Focus, who completely destroyed my subtle approach, is standing there doing nothing. I don't know what's up with him. And right here, do you see that? This is when the game ended for me. I cannot believe I waited that long to drink health potions. What a donut, man. Well, that's the end of Captain Pants' adventure. Great, good, awesome. I wasn't having fun playing him anyway. So, I mean, look at that. Look at all of those potions I have. What good are they going to do me now? That was just, that was stupid. Holy crap, only 15 days passed and I did all that stuff? Wow. I, I hightailed it. I was... I was a rich man, 15 days and close to 45,000 gold, that's crazy. So yeah, I mean, I was doing really well in this playthrough and I just completely fumbled it. I got way too complacent and I thought, oh, you know, I'd rather have these potions for an emergency, even though I was clearly staring down an emergency. And now they do me no good whatsoever, so that's great, good job. I don't think, next time I play this, I don't think I'm going to do the companion's quest line. I forgot how many times they partner you up with someone. And it honestly always goes bad for me, I find, when I'm partnered with someone. Just because sneak attacks are unbelievably useful. It's only good to have someone partnered with you when you're traveling in the overworld. So, yeah, that was, uh, that was sad. Rest in peace, Captain Pants. You, you did good. That was, that was my bad. Anyway, uh, I've got another episode coming up. Five ways to die in Skyrim. Thanks, everyone, for watching, and see you next season.